Hey, this is Jane here at Captivate 2012. We're here with Tamim to talk about uh, DMC Devil May Cry, to give it its full title. Hey, Tamim, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And how are you doing? Yeah, good. It's, yeah. The, it's the first time we're actually letting people have a hands-on, so that's pretty special. Yes, absolutely, because uh, there's a lot more to see and, and obviously to play since we saw you last. Mm. Tell us about what you're showing off here. Okay, so we showed off one of the uh, earlier missions in the game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that we did behind closed doors and then on the floor we've got um, a, one of the missions kind of early-ish in the game a few missions in um, it's been seen before but it's the first time we've let people actually play for themselves okay and um, in the uh, the opener that we saw uh, there's uh, there's Dante in, in the buff shall we say uh, what, what was the design decision behind that um, well when we took on this project one of the things we wanted to do was to because um, you know kind of take Dan strip Dante right back to the beginning like what's he about what why is why has he got the attitude he has why has he got the style he has and so we thought it'd be fun if in the op in one of the opening levels uh, he we did that literally so he actually starts off completely stark naked mm -hmm. and then we build up the character as the mission progresses um, and it's just a way of reaffirming who he is from the very beginning so it's symbolic nudity indeed yeah all right, excellent. And uh, we also got um, got a little more information on Kat. Tell us about her. There's not a lot, uh, not really a lot I can say without there being spoilers. I mean, we've got this concept of the real world. So the game is set in the real world where we live today. Um, and then there's this dimension that sits above it called Limbo. And in Limbo, that's where the demons reside. And Dante gets dragged by demons into Limbo, so that, and they try and kill him there. Uh, Kat's a special character who's um, human. Uh, she's a psychic, and so she can see into limbo. So like a medium would see ghosts, mm -hmm. wh whereas everyone else can't. She can see Dante in limbo and communicate with him as a spirit. Vice versa, from Dante's point of view, she appears like a ghost. Okay. Uh, something we were talking about earlier is, um, in fact, in the early designs of Dante, we thought he had a Union Jack on his coat. Being a British studio, do you remember the earlier? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as a British studio, is, is a British accented Dante something you considered, or was that just pushing it too far? Dante. No, yeah. no, no, we never really considered that. It's, it's no different to kind of, like, at one point it was fashionable to have the, the German flag on, sure, yeah, on, on yeah. the sleeve. Sure, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, he's got a kind of a Parker jacket on, so it's just... Okay. You know. So there's no, there was, there was no more significance to that. No, it was kind of like an, a little acknowledgement that it's mm. a British studio making it. <laughs> Someone doesn't want me here. And um, what we also saw was uh, more of the the satire, seeming satire, yes. social satire behind Devil May Cry. Um, Raptor News, we got a look at. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Raptor News. What's the inspiration for that? Things that happen in limbo affect the real world. Um, events that take place in limbo have a parallel occurrence in the real world and everything's blamed on Dante so while while in limbo it's, it's literally Dante against the world because the world's alive and trying to kill him back in the real world it's also him against the world because he's public enemy number one um, so without saying too much on that there is a lot of satire that goes on um, and there's a lot of um, like like even in the opening of the of the streets level there's um, there's a big poster of virility where the the model's like buff and fit and he's drinking it and it's fitter, smarter, sexier if you drink virility. And the guy that's drinking the can is a, you know, obese, morbidly obese. It'll kill you. Don't attention. So there's, there is a kind of a satirical element to it, which we'll be expanding a lot on quite a lot. Mm. So you're lampooning quite a bit of stuff from what we've seen so far. And in fact, virility, we've got cans of it here. so. So uh, I've yet to try it. But um, Raptor News, are you going after something in particular, like, like Fox News? Is it like right-wing like media outlets? What, what were you targeting with that particular element? Everyone that's an asshole in this world is someone we're going to have a stab at in this game. Oh, come on! Um, let's talk about the combat. We haven't touched on that even yet. But um, what, what are you showing us today? Tell us about the, the angel and devil okay. weapons. So um, you've got the standard, the, go the kind of gold standard rebellion and guns. Mm -hmm. And then we've got an angel weapon called um, the Osiris, which is a kind of a, a more ranged, wider weapon and uh, it's faster. And then we've got on the other side, the demon side, we've got the Arbiter, which is more powerful, uh, but useful mainly against singular enemies. And there'll be more weapons on each side. So you start with rebellion on the game, you then gain 
one angel weapon, one demon weapon, and then you, you build an upgrade on all of them. But the key point is that you can switch between them on the fly. Uh, with a combination of the shoulder pads and the D-pad, you can create your own combos. And, you know, the assumption has been that perhaps if it goes to a Western studio, the DMC series, it'll become more casual. And I think what we're aiming to do is make it accessible, yeah. But we want to make it, um, like, we want to make it ultra-hardcore. If you're an ultra-hardcore player, there's, there should be stuff that you're still discovering on your second and third playthrough. Mm. Yeah. So we're not holding back on that front. Yeah, you said earlier that it was perhaps more hardcore, even more hardcore than before. Perhaps, yeah. I mean, the proof's in the pudding, but um, there's a bewildering array of moves and ways to link things. I've seen people uh, create combos, you know, it, you know, working on this game for years, I've seen people create combos and sequences that I haven't even considered before. And it's very much um, like score-focused and grade-focused because that, that's mm -hmm. always highlighted, that's a, that's a focus for you guys. Yeah, and that's a staple of, DM, of DMC, the, the style ranking system. So for the first time we're also showing how that works and what we've aimed to do there is maintain it as it was in other DMCs but to add a, uh, an element of clarity to it. So every move you do is uh, visually scored. All the bonuses and why you get those bonuses are wrapped up. So the idea is it's not the only, only the preserve of ultra hardcore people that can reverse engineer the scoring system. Anyone can learn it and get, become experts at it. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. Everyone can learn it, but not everyone can become uh, an expert at it. Right, difficult to master. Yeah, the, yeah. that elusive goal. Okay. Um, we've had uh, questions from our users. Uh, quite a few wanting to know whether they'll see Trish or Lady, any returning characters. Can you tell us anything on that? No comment, right? All right, okay. Uh, also from the users, are you planning any sequels with this Dante? Uh, uh, no, I've learned, I've learned to not take it as it comes, you know, just, yeah. just make, make the game as best as you can make it mm. and see what, uh, see what happens. There's definitely scope for, for more games. Yeah. But don't jinx it, don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, don't, definitely don't jinx it. There's, there's many stories to tell about Dante and we're telling one of them, which is his kind of transition into manhood, if mm. you like. Yes. yes, you said it's the story of how he becomes a man. Yeah, no, not, not that he wasn't a man beforehand, but you get what I mean. Oh, you transitioned from female into male. <laughs> exactly. All right, and um, uh, why, this is another user question, why did Capcom want to reboot, like take it all the way back? Why, why were they first looking for a, a new start for Devil May Cry? I don't know. I mean, I think they, they came to us and they said, we want to do something fresh with it, and we want to give it to, well, they, they, they wanted to give it to a Western studio and see if, if uh, they could, you know, if we could inject something different, a different take on it. Um, from our point of view, it was uh, it's an ideal scenario because it means that we can, rather than just copy what was there before, uh, we can um, add to it and create something to own it. It's been a little frustrating that um, we've had so little to show because we announced so so long ago, but. Um, like, I, like I've said before, you know, be patient, get your hands on it, play it. The game's out this year. Yeah. So from now on, I think things will start to pick up and there'll be a lot more stuff coming yeah. online. Okay. All right. Thanks to me. Thanks as always. <laughs> Thank you.